Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Southern Dirt. My name is Summer and today I'll be sharing with you all the seeds and the transplants that you can plant right now here in June. So if you're not a huge fan of gardening in the heat, now is the time to take a break from gardening. Now there's a lot of things that you can grow through the summer months, but if you are looking for a break, I would take a break now. Fall is just around the corner and there's so many things that we can start planting in August, which I will be putting out a video every month to show you what I'm putting into my garden, what I'm starting from seed, what I'm transplanting and when. So if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that. I also am gonna put a video together to show you our pumpkin patch that we're actually planting this week. And my kids and I are gonna to get together and put that in. I'll give you some tips on how to manage your pumpkin patch, where you can get the seeds, which is right here, and uh, all the other things that go along with the fall pumpkin patch. Towards the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a quick garden tour of all the summer loving plants that we have put in the ground over the past couple months, and also all the seeds and the transplants that we're putting in this month. If you haven't already subscribed to our newsletter, I'll be putting the link in the description below. This is a place where I can send an email every month to let you know what to plant and what we're planting, different things that I'm doing here at my farm and garden, as far as what we have in stock, as far as seeds and different plants that we are um, growing here on the farm and workshops. I'll be starting up a list of workshops here in the fall when it cools down a little bit so it can be a little bit more enjoyable for everybody going to come visit the farm and learn a little bit more techniques on how to grow better for our zone. So I'm going to break up zone 9 into zone 9A and zone 9B. So depending on the location that you are in, you can kind of get an idea of what you can plant right now. So in zone 9A, and don't worry, I'm going to put all these notes in the description below so you can cut and paste. And if I go too fast, you can go there. So we can plant okra southern peas, sweet potatoes, seminal pumpkins, sunflowers, malbar spinach, chayote squash, loofah, pigeon peas. We can also start fruit trees like papayas. Um, you can get those seeds from just your papayas in the store. Um, I have some as well. You can plant pineapples right now. Pineapples are so easy to grow and I'll show you my pineapple patch here in a bit. Uh, sugarcane, roselle, and basil and rosemary are great herbs to grow through the summer. Now for 9B, which is the location of my garden and farm, we can plant okra, southern peas, sweet potatoes, seminal pumpkins, sunflowers. I pretty much can grow sunflowers year-round in my garden. We can plant malbar spinach, chayote squash, loofah, pigeon peas, Papaya, we can start. Yucca, pineapple, sugarcane, and then basil and rosemary. So here are the seeds that I'll be putting into my garden right now. In June, we are putting some Malbar spinach. I've got green and red thanks to one of my loyal subscribers that traded me out last month uh, for some seminal pumpkins. So I actually just planted those today. Now we also have loofah growing in the garden that we planted about a month ago. They're super fun to grow if you have not grown your own loofah sponges. They're great to actually eat young, almost like a zucchini, or you can let them dry on the vine and harvest the seeds and then use them as dishcloths or make your own soaps with those. Um, I'm also planting some mammoth sunflower seeds, some okra, and we are actually planting our seminal pumpkin patch today, but I'll also be doing a second planting of those just to see um, which month they actually are gonna do better in. Now all these seeds up here that have southern dirt on them, those are my own homegrown seeds. So those I have available for sale. If you are looking for some seeds to grow this summer, I can send you a full list of all the different seeds that um, I grow here organically and harvest every season. Now down here are some seeds that I got from our local um, seed and feed store. And these are all different types of peas, southern peas. Um, I am planting some Texas cream. Last month I planted some black eye peas. 
Here's some pink eye and some zipper peas. If you guys are looking for a super cute hat, this is my new Garden Hair Don't Care with our logo on the back. That's $25. If you're interested in ordering any uh, of my seeds or my hat, you can just send me an email. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and head into the garden. Here's my queen's wreath. We recently trimmed it back a little bit to encourage some more flower growth and it was kind of getting crazy. Um, we do have some new flowers popping up there, if you can see. And if this is the first time you're joining me on my channel, we have about 1,100 square feet of garden area in our backyard, along with a food forest in our front yard and vineyard. So I'll be taking you out there and giving you quick highlights of that. Over here, we still have some kale left from fall. Now, this is my shady area and this kale's been doing much better than most of our uh, kale that is in full sun um, but that didn't that was totally different for the fall when the kale was in our full sun area did much better in the fall now our kale here that we planted in the shade is doing better for this part of the season we don't have as much bug activity um, it's a much nicer looking kale and it's not getting uh, so beat up by the sun now at the bottom here, you can see as our chickens have been devouring the bottom pieces, but that's absolutely fine with us because they can't reach the top. And uh, so we're feeding our chickens and the family with this over here. We've got some ruby um, eclipse sunflowers I planted here just last month. I also have a couple Everglades tomato plants here. Um, I have some other Everglades tomatoes in full sun. But I wanted to kind of put them over here. I think we get about four to six hours of sun over here a day and just kind of see how those go through the summer. Um, it's really hard to grow tomatoes through the heat of the summer. And these tomatoes are supposed to be hardier um, and that will still bloom and produce through the summer. Um, over here we have our basil that's going to seed. Um, recently we went to the Keys and uh, did some camping and fishing. We typically like to do extended weekends uh, down in the Keys because it is so hot here and spend some fam good family time, but our garden kind of gets out of control, And but that's okay. So we'll pretty much just trim these back a little bit and they'll continue to produce. We'll even put some of these in arrangements in the house because we love the way they look and smell. Over here are mint and our thyme is doing wonderful. I recently hooked up a little um, irrigation to this. I was hand watering these and uh, with as much as we are uh, coming and going, it's just much easier to go ahead and set that up. Um, I wanted to show you guys some strawberries on my strawberry tower. I had some beautiful red ones, but I know you're watching my favorite neighbor. <laughs> When she came over and harvested our two beautiful strawberries, I'm just messing with you. But I will be replacing this. Um, I'll be moving this one to a different area, but I have to show you the super beautiful, inexpensive Made in America garden tower here in a bit. Um, we'll take you over to... See that? And over here I have some rattlesnake beans. That are kind of at their end of their life right now. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of time to harvest our beans. Some of them got too big to harvest so I kind of just let them uh, stay on the vine to dry and save them for uh, next season. You definitely don't want to try to eat your beans when they get real bulgy like that because they'll just be real dry and woody. So actually last night we harvested some and ate them for dinner. I've got a mammoth sunflower over here, just letting the head dry to save the seeds. Over here we have all kinds of eggplants, different varieties. These are just a smaller version. I have a regular uh, eggplant over here. Now over here I have what's called shooting star eggplant. I've actually had this plant here since June. I'm sorry, since... February of last year, I planted these from seed 
and they have been producing the entire season. So this is a great plant if you want to um, grow something year round, as long as you have some kind of frost protection on them. Um, we had tons of frosts this past winter. Um, I was able to cover these. We did have one hard freeze where it did burn the top leaves, even though I did cover. I just ended up trimming them back and they ended up coming back and producing. So we have a zinnia. This is one seed, guys. <laughs> just one zinnia seed, and it's just gone crazy. So if you um, are looking for some zinnia seeds, I do have some for sale. Over here, I have my little succulent stand. If you've been following along, you do uh, know that I've had some deer trouble. Um, I since then found this little Sony radio. I couldn't, nobody had anything inexpensive because everything's gone to uh, wireless speakers now. So this was the only type of thing I could find that I could run on a battery and I have been running it. I don't know if it's helped or not, but um, we, when we did leave, I left that running and we still had a little bit of damage to our plants. I also have since then put in these mothball contraptions with which smell awful <laughs> and I don't think they're helping so um, they're really inexpensive I think what I'm actually going to do is put these out front in our pumpkin patch when we do plant it because I've been seeing a lot of deer out in our food forest and if anything maybe we can put these real close and uh, hopefully keep the deer from eating our pumpkins we didn't have much of an issue last season with any animal eating our pumpkins or our plants. So we'll just cross our fingers this season that that won't happen. Over here, we still have some collard greens going super strong. We planted these in the fall. And at this point in the season, I would have already pulled them along with my kale because it's so hard to just keep the bugs off them. I do everything organically here um, in our garden. So, <clears throat> Spraying pesticides is just not uh, gonna do it for us. <clears throat> now I can say I'm glad I did not pull them because I do have a few plants for some reason that have absolutely no bug damage. Um, then we have some that have a lot of damage. I have been spraying with BT every week and a half or so. Um, some plants are starting to die off, but um, the good thing is we can use this to feed our chickens with. Um, I'm still harvesting them. Um, at this point, we have um, outdone ourselves with kale and collard greens, but we certainly have plenty to share, um, and we're just going to keep it here and see how long we can keep growing it. We do have a sweet potato here and another sweet potato over here. I recently planted some black-eyed peas along here. Here's the few sunflowers I planted that we had some deer activity on and I just left them and they started to produce and then they came back and chewed a little bit more. So I'm just going to actually see how often these deer can just come and chomp off my sunflowers and see if they'll actually produce because this one looks like I'm getting a side shoot and that's a beautiful, that's going to be a sunflower guys. So don't be too discouraged if your deer come over and chomp a plant. And I'll show you some more deer damage that's actually producing and has not been an issue. We've got some zinnias that I recently planted popping up along here. Over on this side, I have my little pea towers that are doing pretty good. These are purple potted peas. Those are really fun to grow. They give off these beautiful purple flowers. Hopefully I'll have enough seeds this season to save. I also have some basic snow peas over here. I have some Everglades tomatoes, which you can see I'm getting a few tomatoes here. Um, definitely got some damage here from some deer, or it could be my chickens. Recently I planted some Malbar spinach, actually yesterday, right here and we'll give you an update on how that is going to grow. We're gonna head over here into the other side of the garden. 
where I have this massive, crazy mammoth sunflower growing right here. I cannot wait for it to open. The leaves are just crazy big. This looks like it's gonna be probably one of the biggest ones of the season. And let's see if I can show you. It'll probably open here in the next week or so. So I'm excited about that. Over here we have sweet banana peppers. Um, I have grown these since I started gardening and they're my absolute favorite pepper. I love just snacking on them. Um, they produce so much, but every year I hadn't grown enough plants to produce enough for what I would like. So uh, this summer I decided to just start from seed an entire row and I am harvesting so much. I'm probably harvesting a gallon Ziploc bag every week and a half and also eating them. That's just what goes into the kitchen. That's not what I am actually um, eating in the garden as well or my kids are eating. Our kids and our neighbors love to come over here and pick the fresh food and have fun little dishes. They like to play on the playground over here and get little bowls out and play chef and make throw collard greens and flower leaves and peppers and whatever they can find and it's such a fun thing to watch and uh, fill their be bellies with plenty of vegetables. Over here we have a beautiful vining loofah plant. I planted, let's see, I think I planted one on each end of these railings. Yep. And they are probably going to take over this um, stalk here. And I have had to tear this end off of this tree already. Yep. And it's already starting to go back up. So loofah plants can go just crazy. One time uh, last year we left to go on vacation and we had one that was climbing on our roof and we had another one that was climbing up this tree and on top of our roof so if you have an area where you have a tree it's a great way to vine them um, and loofahs are super fun to grow which I do have seeds available if you guys are interested in trying it out yourself now between each of these plants I have planted a red onion um, I know that I will not produce a nice bulbed onion during the summer months, but I'm doing that to deter bugs in the garden. A lot of bugs do not like the smell of onions. And I can use the tops for dishes in the kitchen. I have also started some new zinnias along here, some smaller ones there. Over in this area, I have my little tomatoes. I have different varieties from uh, pear tomatoes. They are like these little pear-shaped tomatoes here. I always like to grow a cherry or a small tomato uh, in the spring because the summer months can be super hard to uh, grow a large tomato because of the heat and the water um, that we have constantly in our area in Central Florida. So I lose less tomatoes in my garden by only doing the small varieties. I did recently pull my squash here. It was just disintegrating. It was just, it's just too hot to keep them alive. I recently planted some black eyed peas here. I've got a few different types of autumn flowers, sunflowers through there and today I planted some Texas cream over on this side. Over in this row, I have some okra plants. And these were some plants that were damaged by the deer recently, but I am getting okra. We're harvesting little handfuls here and there. Um, it didn't do a whole lot of damage to my okra plants. So here's one I'm ready to harvest. Over here, I have some thousand head kale, and this is left over from the fall as well. By now I would have uh, went ahead and pulled it up, but I'm just leaving it to see what it will do. Um, we can definitely feed our chickens with it, feed our family with it. And God forbid, if something were to happen, we have plenty of food that we could sell if we needed to. 
or share with friends. Over here, the weeds have kind of taken over, but I do have plenty of Swiss chard and mint that's just like coming out everywhere. It smells so good. My girls will come over here and just take a whole bunch off, throw it in some water and with some ice and they make mint water. Over here I have our lettuce area and it is ready to harvest. It's almost gonna go to seed. So if I don't harvest this right now, my lettuce will be better, bitter. Um, it definitely will be better if you harvest it before it goes bitter. Um, we recently harvested a ton of this and filled multiple gallon bags and ate off it for a couple weeks. And we'll do that again. And uh, after that, I think we're just going to see if it does go to seed. If not, um, we're gonna figure out what to put in here. I don't know. What do you? What would you put in here for the month of June or July? I think we're gonna maybe put some peas or okra in it. Just not 100% sure. So I wanted to show you guys real fast my little pineapple patch. I have them all throughout our food forest. We have them just traveling all the way down. We have a ton of fruit trees along our fence line. These are all pineapples that are grown from pineapple tops from the store. So even when I harvest this one, this top will not go to waste. I will replant that as well. So it is so easy to grow pineapples and now is the time when they are in your local grocery store, when they're, they're in season, they're inexpensive. I wanna say I just bought a pineapple the other day for $2. <laughs> and then tell your neighbors that you like to plant pineapples and they'll save the pineapple tops for you. Literally all you've gotta do is throw these suckers in the ground and they will grow. Here's one of my Chiote squash vines. I planted these back in February and it's actually just about to flower right there. So these, you can find chidey squash in your local grocery store. It's always best to find fruit that is grown locally so you know that that fruit will produce well um, in your area. Here's my other vine. And now is a perfect time to save your seeds. Find a neighbor that may have grown chiote squash. This is where I, um, I've got the seeds for this particular one from a friend and I cannot wait to see what they'll do. And I got them climbing this fence that we have in our yard. I think that completes our garden area. This is the area where I usually shoot my videos and where my kids play. And today I had my youngest one knocking on this window if you guys made it this far, I just wanted to say thank you for always supporting me and watching my channel is definitely growing over the years, especially with the pandemic, with everyone wanting to learn how to grow their own food. And that is my passion, teaching you guys from my garden, from my mistakes, um, and just trying to challenge myself to become a better gardener and digging in and learning and then extending what I've learned to you. We are almost to 4,000 subscribers, so make sure you share this video with your friends so we can get that 4K that I'm really excited about. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time.